Last year, the ARRL, America's National Association for Amateur Radio, complained to the Federal Communications Commission that some electronic ballasts were causing severe interference for amateur radio enthusiasts. Oh no! Badly designed filtering and EMI suppression on some electronic ballasts. I've heard of some models bearing fake FCC compliance labels. It could be turning your power cord, reflector, and lamp into a giant antenna, broadcasting your grow's existence to anyone holding an AM radio within a two-mile radius. Not funny at all. I mean, who wants to get into the bad books of an army? of amateur radio enthusiasts. Certainly not me, so I thought I'd better test my gear to make sure it doesn't have any issues. You might want to do this yourself, especially if you're running multiple lights. You just need any old portable radio capable of receiving an AM signal. For some of you, this is going to be a flashback to the 80s. Others of you aren't going to know what to do, but you can get someone that survived that time frame to help you turn the dials. AM stands for amplitude modulated at the carrier frequencies or in the frequency range of 535 to 1605 kilohertz. So, step one is to go into your grow room with your AM radio switched on, point the antenna at your reflector, power up your e-ballast, and then start scanning from 540 to 1600 kilohertz. You'll hear a lot of white noise, but keep scanning until you hear something like this. That's my e-ballast, right there, 990 kilohertz. Now remember, I'm inside my grow room right now, so a little interference in here is to be expected. No big deal. I just don't want this interference anywhere else, and I certainly don't want to annoy my neighbors because, you know, Everest is a pillar of his community, after all. Fortunately, as soon as I take my AM radio outside of my grow room, the interference stops. I guess that's because my Galaxy Grow Amp ballast is properly EMI suppressed. Like the manufacturers say, apparently it has one of the lowest RF outputs in the industry. By the way, I recommend using an AM radio that runs on batteries rather than plugging it into your wall, as interference can go back into your electrical circuits too, and we want to be testing what's carried in the air, not your electrical supply. I've taken my radio upstairs to double check that there's no interference up there, nothing. As I walk back down the stairs, still nothing. It's only when I'm right back here in my grow room that the noise returns. <sighs> If you've run this test and are at all concerned about your ballast's performance, I suggest going to talk to your hydro store and check your warranty. There are also some gizmos out there that can be retrofitted to older e-ballasts, so ask them about that too. Better yet, invest in a properly RF-suppressed e-ballast and enjoy some peace of mind. Please try this test out yourself and let me know how your ballast performs. I'll repeat the test with any offenders further down the line. Hey, I could use this like a metal detector to find other growers in my area that aren't subscribed to my channel. <laughs> okay, that'll do. Until next time, this concludes Everest's broadcast. Thank you for watching. Roger, over and out.